I can't remember what else was wrong with him, but I mean, he he fell, slid from the top of the twelve. All the way down, took the gutter out. Both these guys took the gutter out when they came because you're trying to grab. I, yeah, as you I go. took the gutter out <laughs> and landed in a bush, and then landed on the ground and rolled across the yard. And for some reason, well, I don't know why. I mean, he didn't. He was in shock, obviously. Right. Didn't call the ambulance. I think the insured wanted to call him an ambulance, but he was like, no, no, and he just got in his car and just drove off. Like left his ladder there, and um, so. We were at the at the hospital, and you, you know, we're sitting in the, in the waiting room with the emergency room for four hours, kind of right. deal. And there's nobody there. I don't know why we're waiting, but that's you know that's what they do another story. And uh, get him all drugged up, and get him all the the pieces of granules and all the stuff picked out of his palms, and I mean, ah, just didn't hit his head or anything, thankfully. But I mean, you can, I mean, and his season was over, yep. right? Broken foot. Let's talk about safety. Safety? Am yes. I the guy that needs to hear this conversation? This is a dangerous job. No doubt about it. I would even say auto claims are dangerous. Why? Keep listening. Find out. <clears throat> so, if, if you've been a, a property adjuster for any amount of time, l- really literally any amount of time, you will have heard about people who have been severely injured uh, or even killed falling off a roof. I'm sure you have. Perhaps. You have fallen off a roof yourself it's, and been se- severely injured and se- had, had the surgery and all that. Right? It's, it is no joke that when you walk on a roof, even if you're just climbing the ladder, you can get into all kinds of trouble real fast like faster than you can react right so we want to talk about ways that you can be safer right tell a few stories here and there about people that we know yourself i have i've actually fallen off a roof as well um and you know kind of talk about what we can do to be safer on roofs Um, maybe some gear talk about a little rope and harness stuff Talk about other ways to be safe when we're out on claims because there's other things that can get you. Right? Hornets. Wasps and hornets. Bees, We've talked about dogs. dogs. Um, people can get you. Humans. You know, so let's jump into this. So, people not paying attention as you were loading up your vehicle. Yeah. I know somebody heard the story. I don't know the person. I know somebody who witnessed it who somebody was loading their ladder up on top of their ladder rack and somebody come down the street wasn't paying attention and hit them and wedged them between them and their truck yeah so you need to pay attention to everything that's going on around you that's right so that's right <clears throat> so you fell off a roof yes i did tell us about it What's so i was in sherman texas and it was uh in june and it was a multifaceted roof with you know different um you know different pitches on it um some were actually 11s that were pretty steep uh predominant pitch was probably a 10 and um so i so i had my rope my harness and um you know there was really no place to tie off to that great in the back or the front but i found you know i was able to find places to tie off to because i didn't have a a weight you know one of those portable things you put water in it or any right, right. sled to do it but uh found ways of tying off and uh so i'm anchored in the back of the house i'm in the front okay uh, inspecting the front well i kind of thought ahead you know before i got up there and it was a circular driveway i had this i have one of those hitches on the back of my truck a receiver mm-hmm. hitch that has like the the tow hook you know that you can put on yeah. and tie off to so tied off to that and uh, so that way, when I went to the back, all I had to do is pull my slack over, and then I could just inspect the back of the house. Well, I'm finished inspecting the front. Um, I'd already expect, inspected both the, so if you're just looking at the house, we're going to say looking at the house, is, I'm, on the, I'm on the west side of the house, the back side of the east. I'd already inspected the, the north and south ends. Um, and those were the steepest ends of the house. Up on the roof, finish the front. I'm up on the peak of the house. I'm going to start looking at the back side of the house, on the east side of the house. Um, 
I detach one of my, you know, I've got redundancy. I've got two different apparatuses on. Unhooked one, hooked it on, you know, flipped around the backside, flipped it over. As I unhooked the other one, uh, the my rope had kind of gotten underneath my leg a little bit. And so I'm kind of stand up there a little bit and I go to flip the rope. Well, as I did that, the granules of the roof, it was an older roof, the granules gave loose. And uh, I was solid. As a matter of fact, I'd already moved the rope and I was about to put my foot back down, my, my right leg back down. And just as I did that, the granules gave loose. I start to slide. So you did the banana peel, you know, comedy. Yeah. With the foot. Yeah. So anyway, I start to slide and bring my right leg down. Well, where I was at was you had a you had a valley, and so I slid into the valley, and my right leg planted into the valley. And when I say planted, it planted, which caused me to change directions and. I it went from going. I was faced. I was facing towards the 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 roof. Okay, to when my foot planted, it twisted me around, and now I'm going down sideways in parallel with the at even the house. And so my foot, you know, I matter of fact, the second my foot planted, I heard a I heard a pop, you know, and uh, I go over the side of the house, and just as I go over the side of the house. The slack takes up, and I, I did hit the ground, but I hit the ground because of the stretch of the rope, and so I hit the ground and bounced back up, and I was actually, I was actually, you know, hovering above the ground a couple of inches, uh-huh. you know, uh, a few inches, and so, oh, oh, geez, dude. <laughs> I took the I took the uh, the gutters with me. As a matter of fact, when I went off when I went over the side oh, as yeah. well, yeah, that's common, and um, and so. Uh, so by the way, you'll be hitting new gutters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way. Yeah, but we're going to, rather than detach and reset, we're just going to, no, just kidding. But uh, <laughs> so I, so anyway, I lower myself, you know, and I'm like, wow, that was, you know, I had, I had, I was smart enough not to put my hands down, you know, to, to stop myself. You know, I just said, let it, let it go, yeah. you know, and, uh, and so. I had just a little bit of scrape on the back of my right hand. Um, I was wearing jeans, luckily, um, you know, that saved me from all types of injury. I finished the inspection, you know, I went around the front, grabbed my ladder, you know, hooked, got back up there, Shaking finished the inspection. Hard. You know, I was actually okay, you know, I mean, it I, It was, it took me a minute I'm to shaking recovery. just hearing the story. You know, it, it was actually, you know, because I've jumped out of airplanes, I've, you know, fallen off stuff before you know just been some pretty vicious car wrecks you know it's like whoa you know oh that was like you know and i and i was laughing i mean it was, it was funny was i was kind of hanging out i was laughing and it wasn't because i'm crazy which is part of it but i was just <laughs> i was like wow you know got lucky there you know you know lesson learned always straddle and never stand up you know right. and uh and so anyway i, I finished the roof and while I'm on the roof, man, just, my knee is just, it's, it's, it's hurting, you know? And I think maybe the shock is wearing off at this point, I guess. I don't know. And uh, I load everything up. I talked to the homeowner, and she, of course, she was asking me if I was okay. And I was like, yeah. And she, oh, she asked, here's what the homeowner says. What was that noise I heard? You ever feel like you've been thrown to the wolves by the IA firms you work for, like you're just a number on a roster? Wouldn't it be nice to work with a firm who's big enough to get plenty of work, but still small enough to know you by your first name. Then let me tell you about my friends at the Oklahoma-based IA firm, Paysetter Claim Service. Founded in 1997, the thing that sets Paysetter apart is their relentless pursuit of excellence. They hold themselves and their team of adjusters to a higher standard of quality. And now with their advanced all-in-one claims platform called Evo, You'll get a real-time Uber-style map and communication link to the insured, automatic messages sent to customers throughout the process, file review automation, and a fast, accurate scope with Paysetter's partnership with Hover. Hover is integrated directly into Evo, making for a smooth and seamless field scoping experience for you as the adjuster. Technology is moving faster than ever, and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. And Paysetter is bringing training to a city near you. Check out their summer tour dates at adjustertv.com slash paysetter. 
<laughs> I, said, well, I slid off your roof and you know what and so uh as i start to leave i'm driving i'm like man this knee hurts bad you know which one was it my right knee Ooh, yeah. so um the driving knee yeah and so i'm driving and it's and i'm in pain and at this point i'm like I'm, i need to get this looked at you know and so i'm in sherman texas and you know one of the things about being independent is you don't have medical insurance. And this was just during my transition, of course, from the private world to yeah. being independent again. And, and I didn't have insurance, but my safety net is, is that uh, thankfully I'm Native American and there's a clinic in Durant, Oklahoma, right across the border. And so I went to go get checked out across the border. and. Uh, and I'm on my way up there. I called the company that I was working with, let them know, hey, look, I've got some other appointments, but this is what just happened. Um, we probably either need to reassign those or push them. You know, found out I had workers' comp. Didn't yeah. know it. Yeah, I'm 1099, and I'm covered under their workers' comp. You know, I get another guy call me up. He sends me and says, hey, I'll send you the the workers' comp info. Here you go. You know, just give this to the clinic. You know, yeah. let's go to. So, went and got looked at. They x rayed me. Of course, x ray is not going to show soft tissue damage. Uh, at first, they thought, well, that's probably just sprained. You're walking on it. You know, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, if it still hurts, you know, in five days or so, give us a call back. Five days comes around. I'm a little tender, but I'm moving around okay. But it hurts. And uh, especially if I pivot, it, it really right. hurts. So, long story short uh, of it, end up getting an MRI. I've got a torn meniscus and MCL is what I've got. And I've got to have, uh, uh, also I've got a, um, and I've got arthritis. I've got no cartilage in my knee. I've got all these things going on. I was in a motorcycle wreck back in, all the way back in 1989. Right. Um, I, I, they even found a when they did the surgery, they found a little bone chip in there, and he put it in a little thing and gave it to me. I've been carrying it around all these years, but uh, <laughs> he gave it, took it out and handed it to me. Anyway, the uh, um, so that was you know that was it was so as I was coming off the roof, it was scary. You know, it was it it was kind of like oh crap, what's going to happen? And then and then whenever I kind of bounced, you know, it was like and I'm kind of hanging there off the side of this house. I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of comp because I find humor in everything. You know, I'm like, wow, well, that's funny. I, I survived, but I better look like an idiot hanging there <laughs> inside this house. And yeah. So I'm trying to get in a position where I can, you know, take some pressure off my my uh, device and and uh, and slide down. And uh, that took me some time. That was another comical thing about it was it right. took me it took me probably I don't know almost a minute to get the get in a position where I could basically rappel down the rest of the way right and so uh all that was scary the the scariest part for me though um and that was what am i going to do now you know yeah right i'm now everything's changed this is and let me tell you i was doing very very well at that time just getting into the game i was i was knocking out several inspections a day you know i'm waiting for my license to come in Remember, this is at the absolute very beginning of right, my career. Right, right. And so, and now I'm sitting there going, what am I going to do now? That was the that was the scary thing. What am I going to do to fall back on? What am I going to do for, I, because I have committed to this, this career and I'm not about to let it be over with. I'm not going to let, quote unquote, fate, you know, yeah. escape me, you know? And uh, so I... You know, but yeah, I just, I didn't freak out. You know, again, I have a very great wife who supports me 100%, and, and she just says, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll, we'll get through this. And uh, so long story short, it took a while, but we discovered what the problem was, got a surgeon, got the surgery done, um, and, you know, I was back on my feet by 1st of September, you know, and... That was 2019? That was 2019, yep. Yeah. So... Um, that was that was that was scary it was extremely extremely scary thinking about <laughs> what am i going to do next again the, the injury to me man i've i've had lots of injuries to me that's not a big deal you know it was what about my family what about my income my career 
yep. where do I go from here? So uh, being a guy who used to sell insurance and everything else, of course, now I have disability insurance and I've, I've got, uh, I got a backup insurance plan and I got, <laughs> I got, uh, yeah, yeah. I got all that stuff now, but um, so lesson learned again, you know, always make sure you're solidly attached to that roof, you know, in some way. I will tell you that in my younger days, even back when I used to sell roofs and everything else, I was on some sketchy roofs. I will never forget one time where I put a ladder on a roof and I just ran straight up to the peak of the roof. And once I got up there, I realized, oh, crap, how am I getting down? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I wasn't even wearing cougar paws. I had on a pair of Chuck Teglers. Uh -huh. You know, I was just out doing an inspection on a Saturday morning. My stepson was with me on this. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm coming off this roof. There was not a valley that I could use, so I'm turtling down this roof. You know, in my where you're, where you're. There was no way. I started to go backwards, and I felt myself sliding. I was, I was trying to kind of crawl backwards. So then I just kind of leaned back, you know, because I thought well, if I start sliding, I want to go off the side of this thing feet first, you know. And and so I, I like my hands behind me and I'm coming down real slow just inching my feet down and one time I slid a little bit and when I finally get down to the edge of the house my stepson brings the ladder around to that side for me and I, I looked at whatever I was up there on that peak I was the, saying okay if I fall where's the softest spot down there right and I picked right. that spot and that's the one I headed for <laughs> so uh, listen I'll give you a piece of advice for people who are listening if that happens and it you can get a little over enthusiastic yep. I've, I've done that yep um the, the trick to getting down is obviously the, the trick is to not go up without knowing how you're going to get down. Right. But if you, if you go down to the end of the, of the building to the gable end, yep. then you can hold on, to the, hold on to the edge and kind of like using leverage, work your way down that That's way. That's kind of what I did. But if you don't have somebody with you yeah. to move the ladder down, yeah. you're still screwed. If right. it's a, if it's like a 10 or a 12, I don't climb on a slope without a rope and harness that I, there's nothing there. Right. If there's no valley, if there's no little hip ridge, if there's no thing sticking, if there's not a, like a big skylight in the middle of that, that I can reach up and grab onto and you know, anything that you can hold onto, it's not that you're like hanging on it necessarily. It's like you're using it to, to balance yourself and in case you fall, you can grab it. Right. Kind so of like. on this particular house that I ran up on like that, the problem with going to the edge and coming down like that was the way it was a zero lot line type property mm -hmm. the fence came up right to the corner of each house so my fear was if i slipped i was going to fall on top of that fence oh and that would be worse oh, yeah you know yeah. and so i thought i'd rather just hit the ground rather than hit the fence and get impaled by some splinters and everything else oh so it, was just, a wood, it wasn't it was like a wood a fence. chain link because yeah. I mean, you could land on that top bar and yeah you know, cross your back but anyway it was just so i was just like i'm just coming down somehow and you know, but that was that was after that particular incident, and that was, you know, that was many years before, I learned after that, A, you know, my limitations, you know, when it comes to, oh, to roofs. Yeah. Cougar paws, cougar paws, cougar paws, you yeah. know, those are always going to help you. Um, by the way, I was wearing cougar paws whenever I came off the roof, okay? and When you slipped on that one? When I slipped on that one, I came off of... Um, I still have the soles inserts on it. It ripped the sole of the cougar paw. You know, facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience, jeopardizing your years of hard work and success. If you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster, you're putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W-2 or you work carrier direct, Protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV. That's cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Wow. I mean, I've still got them. And a uh, big old chunk torn off the side of it. But uh, yeah. anyway, that... so. So back up, I learned my limitations, okay? Uh, I learned that um, anything can happen on a roof, you know? Even if, it, and I've ended up going on some roofs later on that were not as steep, I and mean, we're talking six and sevens, mm -hmm. you know? 
easily walkable roofs. But I've been walking across those roofs and the granules have given loose on me and I've slipped. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, so no roof is safe. No, Absolutely no, no roof. not at all. And there was one roof that I was on that would look, the roof wasn't even two years old. And I was walking across it, granules gave loose and I slipped. Yeah. You know, so um, I learned that, you know, you can never get, I mean, in my lifetime, I can't tell you how many roofs I've walked on, you know? And then all of a sudden, my first couple of years as an adjuster, I'm slipping left and right, you know, and never happened to me before. Yeah. You know, and so just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it won't happen to you. Yes. And you have to act like every single roof, you could fall off of it. Everyone's every going to kill you. One. This is what I know about roofs. They're all dangerous and they all want to kill me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> just like wasps. That's right. And some dogs. <clears throat> so, yeah. So there is, there's a number of ways again to mitigate the the risk you're never going to completely get rid of any risk when you're even just stepping foot on yep. to the bottom rung of a ladder you you can break your neck and fall from six feet mm -hmm. five or six, six yep. feet if you do if you hit wrong right i've known people that have there was i had a manager years ago it's probably 15 years ago and super sharp like brass tacks you know, doesn't take, doesn't put up with any baloney from anybody, knows the job inside and out. Had been, had, she'd been in a, a manager f and, and she'd been in claims for her entire career, right? And she was towards the end of like getting ready to retire to move off to Arizona and on a horse farm, right? Mm -hmm. And she, I got one of, one of my manager, she was, uh, I think she was a carrier manager. Anyway, long story short, somebody from the the like the admin team. I was one of the. It was me and one other adjuster that were left on the storm on this cat site, and she, those those people were still there. And she called and she said that, hey, listen, so and so has had an accident. She was doing a reinspection or QA in a file or whatever, and she's in the hospital. She fell. Oh man! And I was like, oh no. We went and visited her. She didn't. She put her ladder on a uh, black asphalt driveway in the morning when it was like damp, like wet. She didn't get up, she, didn't, she barely got halfway up the ladder. She didn't even get to the top of the ladder before it slipped out from under her. And she hit the garage door and then hit the ground with her head. And uh, she was, we didn't go see her right away. She was in, in there like having stuff done or whatever for, for a couple of few weeks. And we went in and saw her a few weeks later and she was like, Hi, Matt. And not wow. sharp anymore, not brass tacks, not, you know, she was just, you know, barely focused on you. And, and it was pretty sad. We are fragile, right? Especially our little, our little melons, right? Just falling six feet, cracked her head on, on the, on the pavement. And it's now, you know, I don't know what her recovery was after that, um, but you know she probably is, got to go to her horse farm early out in Arizona right. and sit in a rocking chair on the front porch. Um, it ended her career, definitely for sure. Uh, in uh, another occasion, I got a call from a buddy of mine, and we had been working the same storm. It was early in the storm season; it was like June, mm -hmm. and he calls me, and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, right? And normally I don't get calls in the afternoon. We usually like connect in the evening and then go get dinner or whatever, or send texts or whatever. He's like, hey man, how's it going, man? I'm like, Jimmy, is everything okay? Cause he sounded like kind of like, hey man. He goes, do you know where Baptist Memorial Hospital is? I was like, yes, did you fall off a roof? Yeah, man. <laughs> He was all like drugged up. He fell off a roof and broke ribs and broke his foot. And oh man, early in the season, he's got little kids, right? And he's out for the season. And they had, it was same deal, workers comp. Um, and so I went and picked him up from the the hospital. And so another time, um, I get a phone call, one o'clock in the afternoon, Tuesday. You know, sunny day. Hey Matt, where are you? I'm like I'm on a roof. Where where are you? I'm on a ground. <laughs> yeah. He goes 
It's my buddy Dan. He goes, I'm sitting in my truck in front of the hotel. Can you come get me? I'm like, wait, what? It's like, these things, it's like, it doesn't compute. What am I going to come get you for? You're already in your truck. Why do you, can't you come get yourself? Because you're in your, your tr-. and he sounded like shaky. So I was like, oh. did you fall off a roof? <laughs> yeah, just, just come get me. I just, I got to go to the hospital. And I'm like, okay, I'll be there. And, you know, I'm I was two neighborhoods away, right? So I went and picked him up. And I, I pull into the parking lot at the hotel. And he's sitting there behind the wheel of his truck with his hands like this. And he's white as a sheet. And he's like, he just looks over at me and just like, I'm like, all right, bro, let's, you know, kind of gathered him out of the car, put him in my truck, went to the emergency room. All the skin on his hands was gone. Oh, that's... And broken ribs. I can't remember what else was wrong with them, but it, it, I mean, he he fell, slid from the top of a twelve all the way down, took the gutter out. Both these guys took the gutter out when they came because you were trying to grab. Right. Yep, as you I go. took the gutter out <laughs> and landed in a bush, and then it landed on the ground and rolled across the yard. And for some reason, well, I don't know why. I mean, he didn't. He was in shock, obviously. Right. Didn't call the ambulance. I think the insured wanted to call him an ambulance, but he was like, no, no, and he just got in his car and just drove off. Like left his ladder there and. Um, so we were at the, at the hospital and you, you know, we're sitting in the, in the, the waiting room with the emergency room for four hours kind of right. deal. And there's nobody there. I don't know why we're waiting, but that's, you know, that's what they do another the story. Man. And, uh, get him all drugged up and get him all the, the pieces of granules and all the stuff picked out of his palms. And I mean, ah, uh, just didn't hit his head or anything, thankfully. But I mean, you can, I mean, and his season was over, yep. right? Broken foot. There was Broken somebody ribs. that I had heard of um, that they all they did was they just stepped off the ladder. Which they were way? coming off the ladder. Was oh, that? Going onto the roof or coming off? They were the coming off the roof, and it was the beginning of the storm season. First, this was somebody I think I heard about it. I know I heard this story this year. It was the first storm they were on of the season. First roof just steps off the ladder, the bottom rung. Something freak happened. You can broke their foot or something like that. Done. Yeah. Never Doesn't done. take much. Because if you done. can't climb a roof, you, know. you can't do cat claims because yeah. you can't walk. If, I mean, if, you're, if your foot's broken or your knee's messed up or, you know, you, well, you can't even, like, if you broke your wrist or you broke your arm and you had to have a sling, you can't climb around on a roof with one arm, right? You just, it's not going to, it's not working. Well, you know, I pretty much stayed off of property from, from the time I had that accident until I'd done a few small loss water claims you know, um, over the past year, um, not a lot. I've been mostly doing, you know, like I said, auto specialty equipment, that sort of thing. Um, and then I went to, went, did the hurricane. And I was never worried about getting on a roof again. As a matter of fact, it scares my wife to death, or me getting on a roof. She's like, oh, you're going to do this again, you know. And um, it doesn't scare me. It doesn't bother me to get on a roof. It, it's just... You know, to me, it's just, it's life, you know. It's just life. Life's just a series of roofs I got to climb. Yeah, I mean, it's just, well, you know, it's like <laughs> if, if you let one incident in your life that's negative affect how you go about living the rest of your life, Yeah. you know, then for me, with the much injuries that I've had and accidents and crazy other stuff happened in my life, I would probably just sit in a room and never leave. Right, you know? right. I mean, I've had car wrecks, motorcycle wrecks, come off roofs, you know, just all this other crazy stuff that happened in my life. You know, and it's like, just keep on moving. Well, when I was, my first roof I was on down in Louisiana, I was just top of the roof and I took a picture from the roof, you know, posted it up on social media. My friends were freaking out. What the heck are you doing on a roof, man? <laughs> what are you doing? It's like, everybody's like, are you an idiot? Yeah. <laughs> you know what happens last time you on a roof? And, uh, there's more people are worried about my safety than I am, but uh, at least no, I'm loved. Yeah. But. yeah. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With Scoper Writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field, or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? 
Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. But <laughs> they need all those dad jokes. If, if, what yeah. happens if, you know? Yeah, I know. But uh, roof safety is a big deal. I mean, it is. I, I used to take it for granted of tying off the ladder at, mm -hmm. at the top of the roof by, you know, just bungee corning it. You Your know, ladder you, falls over one time when you're yeah. up on the roof and nobody's there to pick it up. Yeah. You're, you're not getting off. down. Or you could be climbing a ladder. It's happened to me. So I'm climbing a ladder. Nice gust of wind comes out of nowhere, okay? Blows that ladder sideways. I'm bailing off the side of it. I'm jumping, <laughs> you know? I mean, didn't yeah. injure myself or anything like that. Yeah. And this happened many years ago, you know? Um, I learned a lesson then. That's whenever I said, everybody, so here we're gonna tie your ladder off? I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. Yeah, After right. that day, guess what happened? I always tie my ladder off. That's right. So it starts with, Ladder safety starts with putting the ladder on ground that's not going to be slippery. When I fell off a roof, I didn't make it all the way up to the roof, but I made it up to waist high over the gutters. It was actually with the, the guy that fell off the roof, but on a different storm. And he, I was, for some reason I was, with, I don't know why I was with him. We were just, I think I had a break or something and I was like, he's like, He's like, where are you at? I'm like, over here. Why don't you come on over and look at this one with me? It's a big, it's a really interesting big one. It's, it's kind of fun to climb roofs, I mean, let's be honest. Right. It's a little bit of an adventurous kind of a thing. So he climbs up. I'm holding the ladder for him. We had to go take a ladder up onto the back deck. And the boards of the deck were running perpendicular to the wall and to the gutter, which is 100% a no-no. Yeah. I knew it then. And for some reason, I was we're just like, you know, yakking at each other. I put. The, I looked down, saw the boards, and I was like, "I'll just hold this for him." Held it for me, went up, and then I'm like, well, "I'm gonna go up too." And I get up to the top of the, to the you know my waist, my belt buckles right about the gutter, and I look up at him, and he looks down at me, and I get ready to say something. I start to say something, and the ladder goes foop and slid out from under me, and I went to had my both my hands, and I went like this whack onto the gutter helmet, and then was gone. <laughs> And he said, that he goes, I didn't, I didn't injure, injure myself and I didn't really break anything except for a little plastic like, right. deck chair that was right underneath, underneath the ladder. I basically landed on my feet and fell back on my butt. He said, he goes, you made this face <laughs> and then you just disappeared. <laughs> so listen, it, it, it starts with putting your ladder on. If you're gonna put your ladder on a deck, never under any circumstances put your ladder on a deck where the boards aren't parallel oh, to, to the, the wall. wall. So, the, right. and I'm gonna turn. I don't care if I scratch that deck, nope. especially if it's got already got hail damage. Turn to the it. cleats into it. Put them turn the cleats there. into to it. Put them in in the, the crack between yep. the boards, and make and give it a good shake. Right. Make sure that the ladder is at the right angle, and you find that super easy. You stand at the base of the ladder when it's leaning up against the gutter. Put your arms straight out, and if your hands can grab the ladder where you're at, then that's about the right angle, yeah, roughly. Roughly. Then climb to the top with your bungee cord or your strap or your whatever you got, and tie it off. It's not going to keep it like you couldn't hang on it that way, but it's going to keep it from blowing over, yep. and it's going to keep it relatively secure from scooching when you get off of the ladder onto the roof, and when you come back. More importantly, when you come back down God, and you step onto anything. the ladder. If it's not strapped off and it does a little, you know, six inches to the left away from you, it could be enough to toss you off the edge yep. onto the ground or most, just freak you out. Most accidents happen when people are getting on and off the That's ladder right. at the at the rooftop. Yep. That's where most of the accidents happen at. Exactly right. And you have to, every time, every time you're climbing a roof. If you're doing 10 claims a day, hail claims, and you're hammering them, you're smashing them. 
it's 20 times minimum that you're getting on and off of the ladder, okay. right? That's 20 chances. Every single time you have to treat it as though you're over lava or you're over a 10,000 foot cliff, right? That's how you have to treat that step from the ladder to the roof and from the roof back to the ladder when you come down off it every time. Uh, going up, you got momentum, right? It's easier to go up than it is to come down. You don't yep. want to have momentum coming down because then no. it just carries you right off the roof. I remember, I remember picking up velocity. Yeah. As I was going down that roof. Momentum and velocity. <laughs> just, Those two words, just, you don't want them. Just. And you want to be, sh be sure that your ladder, you've got it at the minimum two feet of it sticking up above the gutter so you have something to grab onto coming down and get, get getting on and off the ladder because you got a handle that's a little bit higher than if if you have a 24 foot ladder and it's peaking you know four inches above the gutter all the way extended it's and you're that ladder. high off the, it's the wrong ladder it's the wrong ladder <laughs> I, i'm going to tell you unless there's a big you can slide it into a valley and there's a lot of stuff to grab onto and it's not very steep sure no problem tie it off that's not that's probably a no problem we're up to get on anything else there is zero shame and there's zero nobody's going to tell you not to do this you can scope hail from the top of a ladder you've got to be sure that if you don't find damage up there that it's you're no making damage. a good call right but you can see you can get to the top of the ladder you can do like a 20 foot long two foot high or one foot high whatever it is right test square right 20 times well it'd be five foot high right right no i don't even yeah, yeah it would be five. 20 Anyway, you can do a really long skinny test square down the thing. You're not gonna. I'm not gonna draw that like that. I'm gonna go to the top of the ladder and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna make my six or seven or eight circles. Put you know R equals eight and then hold my camera back and take a picture so they get it and then take some. You know, I'm gonna get all my shots from the top of the ladder. Right. You, it's extra work. You're gonna have to pick the ladder up and carry it, move it around all the four sides of the house if there's four slopes, but. It's a legitimate way to scope a roof. As and long I don't as care. If you, if you end up doing a reinspection on it and you said no because you scoped it from the top of the ladder and it turns out that it's yes, like you show up and the, and the contractor's there and he's got a 40-foot ladder and rope and harness and the whole nine yards and you can get on that roof and you see that you did there was damage, then you, you made the wrong, you did the wrong thing, obviously, because you don't want to generate more right. work. If you have questions, you need to be prepared. Right, so you need to have a ladder that can get over the, the over the edge of it, pretty much any roof that you're probably going to encounter in the field. That's my my point of view. I carry a 32 foot extension ladder aluminum. I carry a 30 or a 24 foot aluminum extension ladder. There's not just about z one percent or less of roofs that I can't get on, and those are usually commercial buildings, right? And a lot of times the contractor's already there with his 40 footer. Right, so we're all, we're getting able, to, or there's a hatch on the roof, or there's a way to get it. Right, right. so there's some other way to get on the roof. Um, rope and harness is something that I think is it's a critical piece of gear. Bless you. It's an Thank important you. piece of gear that you need to, to to learn how to use. In some cases, you can make extra money on your fee bill if you have rope and harness certified, and you can show demonstrate that you used it. But I always say this, you have to practice. Because if you make that figure eight wrong, right? Because you can't re yeah. remember, it was seven months ago, last time you, you set your rope and harness gear up. You make that not wrong, you're dead. You could die. You could be, you know, mush yep. in the driveway. Because yep. you'll come right out of it. Yep. If you don't remember how to use your gree gree, or you don't remember how to make a prusik knot, you know, if you don't remember this stuff, these are, they're complicated things, right? You have to practice that stuff all the time. All the time, yep. you know, you, you may pull your rope and harness gear out on one out of two hundred roofs because you absolutely have to do it. Unless you're doing virtuals, yeah. Every other one's a rope and harness roof. Yeah. So. <laughs> Are you interested in more than just punching a clock and paying the bills? Wouldn't you rather be on the A team, surrounded by the best of the best in the industry? 
then you need to check out Eberl Claim Service. For well over 30 years, Eberl's philosophy of treating adjusters as they wish to be treated has allowed them to establish a vast network of the most professional, educated, and dedicated adjusters in the industry. So at Eberl, you're in good company. If you're a motivated and compassionate adjuster slash claims professional, Eberl wants you to represent their organization. Go to jobs.eberls.com right now and get started with Eberl Claim Service. You were talking about your friends whose hands were tore up. Mm-hmm. That was, I've seen that happen to people, you know. Also, I've had a motorcycle wreck, and I've seen what's happened to people's yeah. hands whenever they go down the freeway and try to stop themselves it's sliding. 95 miles an hour. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, that's how fast I was going when I had my wreck. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, 95 miles an hour, and the rear tire blows out. Oh. Good times. So, uh, that's why whenever I started to fall, when I started to fall, I just... I just made sure my hands just stayed away from it. And I just kind of, I just kind of was trying to move my legs and keep my legs moving, trying to see if I could slow myself down or stop. But um, I think I might have touched the roof one time and realized that was wrong. And then, but I did not. Yeah. Wear gloves. Yeah. Wear gloves on um, the roof. And I was about to say that I know a guy who actually he ripped his hands up. Matter of fact, ripped his hands up so bad that when he, I asked him about him wearing his gloves, he took this took his gloves off and showed me his his palms where they were flattened uh-huh. where he went all the way into the meat oh. whenever he had his accident Oof. so um yeah gloves are gloves are a good thing yeah and they can still wear through those gloves but it'll be a oh, whole yeah. lot less damaged to you once it gets to your meat here's another another advantage of wearing gloves and even if you're in minneapolis you know you're up north in the summertime the roofs are still going to get hot down in texas they're so hot that you're gonna you're gonna damage the roof walking around on because they're gonna be so soft. You can't touch that roof with your bare hands, right? No. And if if you if you're wearing five dollar work gloves from Home Depot, is all you really all you need. As long as I, I would get leather, try to get leather ones or with a breathable back or something, mm-hmm. so you don't get too hot. You can grab shingles with those, right? You can stick your hand up underneath the, the bottom of it for a little bit of extra balance. You can grab vents, you can grab whatever you need to grab, but grab a hold of ridge cap on a little like, you know, there's a hip offset or something and you're going up the valley, you've got something, you can grab onto that stuff. Cause if you try to do it with your bare hands, you're gonna be like, you know, it's, you know, it's like you might as well be barefoot up there, right? Um, so wearing gloves is another critical piece of equipment that I would absolutely get. If you're going to do any roof inspections anywhere, because the roofs are going to, they're going to get hot for sure, and they protect you if you happen to take a spill. Well, and so it brings us to another point. We're talking about roofs, mm-hmm. okay? We can also go to the same thing with cars, okay? You can fall off a pickup truck because you want okay. to inspect the roof on it. Most guys will just climb up the back of the truck and they'll look at the roof back there and they'll go to climb off the back or they don't pay attention to their footing. Slip. A lot of guys will sit, like, especially in Texas, everybody likes to drive around with their, their trailer hitch in, the trailer ball in. Whoa. You know, you ever take one of those to the chin? Anyway. Or the shin? Yeah, so uh, that's what I meant to say, shin, <laughs> not chin. <laughs> well, anyway, you could take it yeah. to the chin. I mean, Well, you know, you just, you put your foot on that, you step up on it, you step up on the bumper and you throw your legs across. Well, when you come down, you try to do the same thing. Let's say you didn't hit that ball just perfectly and you slip and fall, you know, um, I've I've seen it happen, and yeah. and then a lot of times when you start doing auto, you'll start getting into RVs, okay? And you got to get up and you got to inspect the roof on an RV. Yeah, you need a ladder. And so actually. either you use the ladder that's attached to the RV, which I don't really recommend, because especially if the RV is older, you don't know if where they've it's attached fiberglass the, and it's and yeah, or, and, and or where they've got it attached to the roof. There's you no know, roof rod up there, so use your own ladder to climb up. Um, you can get up there, and those things can get slick up there. You know, they get algae. Yeah, they get mildew, things like that. Oh yeah, for sure. Or if it's rained, they can also get really soft too. And you're walking along, and all of a sudden you hit a soft spot on that roof on that RV, and your foot goes through it, or your whole body goes through it because you're not really paying. Just like on a roof. Yep. I've been on a roof where the decking was rotted, and I'm walking across the roof, and all of a sudden I sunk about six inches. You know, and yeah. there's nothing. And this, that scared me more <laughs> than it did when I started sliding. Yeah. Because I thought I was about to go through the attic, through the house. Yeah. There ain't nothing stopping. So, yeah. So, so, the inherent design of a roof 
is dangerous, right? So that right. especially the steeper they get, the higher they are, the, con- the condition of the surface where you're putting your ladder, um, the angle you're able to put your ladder at, but also the conditions of the sh- types of shingles and the conditions of the shingles. Um, you can, I found that cougar paws work great on wood shake as long as you have fresh pads. If you, if that plastic edge of the boot that where the, it's, you know, Correct. there's a, a place that where you, you stick the pad in there. It's got Velcro and everything. If you happen to get on a ed, on your edge, you're, I mean, you're it's, gone. it's yeah. and wood shake. I don't care what kind of shoes you're wearing. The second it starts to get a little bit wet. Like if, if you happen to, ha- if uh-huh. it's from dew. dew overnight or if it's getting ready, it's starting to rain, starting to sprinkle, yep. you're going for a ride. You're taking the fast way down because I don't know, it's, it's got dirt, it's got stuff growing on it that is when it's dry, it's like sandpaper, right? And you can stand on it, no problem. But the second it starts to get a little bit wet, it's like, shoo. so same thing, metal, right? Yep. It, I'm not walking on a metal roof that's greater than like a 312 ever under any circumstances. Cause that's, I mean, it's like glass pretty much. And if yep. it's damp at all, no. You're done. Scope that, you can scope that just by climbing up, kind of to the top of your ladder and looking up the panel, you can see all the hail dents way better than you can standing on top of it and looking down at the, at the panel, right? Right. So you can take that picture, no problem. And again, p- trying to do, all you gotta do is prove that there's damage, right? However you get the picture, there's nothing that says you're absolutely required to climb on the roof, a dangerous roof, right? right. As long as you can show that either it's damaged or not damaged and it's a proper assessment, you're okay. Um, Let's talk about double pulls. Oh yeah, that's a good one. So tell so why don't you expand on that first? So a double pull is a technique in climbing so, certain two-story structures where that may have a one-story roof, like a a garage that's you know sticks off the side of like a colonial. Mm-hmm. They have a one story, a garage with a one story roof on it with one story access. This is what we're talking about is access, right? So you can, no problem, your 16 foot ladder gets you on the garage. And then they have a two story colonial, whatever, mm-hmm. it's a straight gable or, or, or hip or whatever it is, where you either need a two story ladder if you wanna get from the front yard up to the second story to get up on that top roof, or you can, climb up onto the the garage and then pull your reach down and pull your ladder up and carry it up to the peak of the garage roof and set it on the peak and lean it over onto the top of the two-story section of the house never put it on a downward slope no never it's and then you can climb up that way and do the inspection it is super dangerous and a lot of people get in a lot of trouble and a lot of falls happen on double pulls Especially if you don't do it right, or if you if you think you know, well, I put it on a downward slope one time, and it was like a a half, one twelve or something right. like that, and it was it was okay. And then you put it on a three, it's going, you're, right. you're gone, it's it's game over. Um, if you put if you straddle the feet over the top of the the ridge on the lower roof, and then you put where the peak is at the top, you put that through the the hole between the rungs. That's pretty. That's a pretty solid mount. All that being said, it's against the rules. Pilot's not going to let you do them. I don't think Eberl or Lockhart or anybody else is going to have a policy where they say, yes, it's okay to do double pulls. They're going to say, do not do double pulls. They're too dangerous, right? They are, uh, a lot of times they're not necessary, right? Right. And here's why. If you're doing a hail claim, and you have a front slope and a back slope on the garage, and then you have a front slope and a back, a corresponding front slope and a back slope. They're going to be matchy matchy because right. architects, you know, they want to have things to be relatively uniform. Front slope and a back slope on the upper, and they're the it's same directional slopes like the front, the upper and the lower front, same direction, upper and lower back, same direction. Do your test squares on the lower slope. And if you find enough damage to total the front and back slopes, then you've totaled the roof. The right. total. You don't have to climb every slope, right? right? You need to be able to get up there and see, or not, you don't, you need to be able to see, count the vents, make sure, you know, count the layers, because there might be two layers up there, the top, it's possible. Um, and you want to make sure that you get everything that's on the roof, right? If it's a, if it's a wind claim, 
or a tree claim where the tree hit the house and it hit only up there, you can still you can scope that from the ground. Right. Generally speaking, sometimes with tree damage, the scratch you, the, the shingles may be scratched up all over the place, and you can't really see that from far away, so you kind of have to look at it close up. Every time, every scratch shingle you see counts as a damaged shingle, right? Because it's right. it's damaged, it's physically damaged. Um, you may need to get up there and see it, but the thing with the double pulls is that they're they're very very dangerous. There's too many opportunities for error there, and for people, there may be people who are super competent or rock climbers or like you know backcountry mountaineers and all that kind of stuff who had no no problem doing that stuff. But then there's everybody else. Who, um, everybody else yeah yeah who may not who may not have the awareness of where they're setting their ladder they may re- realizing that it's they're going to die if they put their ladder there and then they do they have an accident so the first time i had ever heard of a double pool um company i was working for at the time um guy says hey uh um i got this one house to go look at and I got a double pull. Would you go with me? And I was like, well, I've got other stuff to do. You know, you probably got find somebody else to do. I just really didn't like the guy. And, uh, and so the guy goes by himself. So he's at the driveway. He, you know, gets up on the first part. Uh-huh. And he goes, pulls up, gets up. Ladder goes out from underneath him. He comes down. Slams onto the deck that's over the garage, rolls off of it, lands on the hood of the guy's truck, down the homeowner's truck down below. Right. And then messed up the hood pretty bad. Story is a guy got up and walked away from it. Just grabs his just ladder. Just like in his Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Just, they said he hit, hits the deck, rolls off the deck, lands on the hood. You know, he walks away from it, everything else. However, the, the repercussions from that because he actually damaged the decking when he hit the decking and he damaged the guy's hood, you know, created a whole nother right. you know, problem. Um, guy walks away, but yet he still had broken ribs and some other issues. Right. He could walk, uh, but both his arms broken, his jaw yeah, broken, his eyesight yeah, is broken. Yeah, he, uh, I, I don't forget, I don't remember what all ended up being wrong with the guy, but he didn't go to the doctor until like a day or two later and, and uh, he was jacked up pretty bad. So that was the first time I'd ever heard of a double pull. And the first time I ever heard about it, the guy comes off of it. So my policy has been, if it needs a double pull, I'm not the one doing it. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. If it, if that means I got to just say, sorry, I'm a, I'm a wimp <laughs> and, I'm a wuss and I don't have the equipment. I'm not going to buy it or whatever happens. Right. Then it, it happens. You know, some guys will take along a, uh, super light, like they'll, they'll get like a 12 foot extension ladder and yep. pull one of the extensions off and just use that. Yeah. And it weighs no, they're real light, right? And then they'll carry that up to the top and set it up and do their scope and then climb up and scope the top. And no matter how you slice it, it's super dangerous and it's not strictly necessary to do it. Um, there's again, there's always a way. There's always a way. And I, I'll tell you, I've worked in neighborhoods where you could double pull every single house in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. but that's why I carry a 32 foot ladder because I'm gonna. I'm going to mitigate some risk there. It takes extra time, first right. of all. You know, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to sling around a 32 foot ladder by yourself, but you can do it, and it's you're going to be a lot safer, or not a lot. You're going to be safer, <laughs> but because you you know you safe that, is a relative term. It's a relative term, so you got a positive contact with the ground and and the thing. The 32 foot ladder is going to go you know four feet above the top of a of a normal two story mm-hmm. right and sometimes on those on those those houses like that where they've got like a, a kind of a the roof extends to a patio cover over the front door and then it goes mm-hmm. into the garage roof you can lean and then there's a two story up here you can lean the ladder in just such a way mm-hmm. that it'll touch the gutter right on the, the one story and then also touch the gutter on top right i'm gonna go up and tie it off on top climb down scope this and then climb up and scope that i've done those so, i've had those I like a big, a big ladder like that, but they're they're extremely heavy, and if it's windy, yep. it's it's hard. To, I, I I originally ran with a twenty eight foot fiberglass ladder until I it was at the very very edge of like my physical upper body strength to, to and then as soon as the wind started blowing, 
I think it's going down into the street, right? When you, you get it all the way up there and the wind blows. Because you have, in order to extend it, to get it onto the roof, you have to Definitely pump it straight right. up. Right. And then you like pull the rope and, you know, let the thing go up to however high you think it needs to be. And then you lean it over. Oh, that's not far enough. And lean it back and pull it a couple more. Yeah, I have a 28-foot fiberglass, you know, and, and that thing is just, I was like, every time I had to pull that thing out, I'm like, oh, man. Here's my back. <clears throat> Old man don't like that stuff. No, so I switched to a thirty uh, to a fiber or a aluminum one, and it was manageable. Still pretty heavy, and you know if you're a, a smaller person or a woman who doesn't have the same upper body strength, you know, yeah. it's going to be challenging. That was misogynistic as heck, man. Thinking women aren't just a, if, or if you're a twelve year old boy, Wait. who's you know, we're about to get censored. Maybe we should just cut this whole part out. Maybe. <laughs> or you know what if you have shoulder problems you can't lift stuff over your head or you're just old and just don't want to do it or you, just, you just don't want to do it it's not for you <laughs> i'm you know i'm in that game if you're an auto claims adjuster or appraiser you already know that sca is one of the top companies that you can work for on the auto side but if you're a property adjuster who's never done any auto you may have never even heard of sca we've heard of them now SCA Claim Services is launching their property division and they're poised to bring their decades of claims management experience and extensive resources to the property side of things. Insurance carriers already trust SCA because they know they will always receive a high level of customer service and policyholder satisfaction. And with literally millions of claims handled in SCA's four decade history, carriers trust SCA to help them avoid unnecessary costs by handling every claim every time with unparalleled accuracy and a commitment to doing things the right way. I mean, these guys are old school, right? Since 1979, SCA has been exceeding expectations. Only a company dedicated to serving and taking care of people, including their adjusters, can a company like this continue to grow in this industry. Join the team with industry-leading NPS scores and cycle times that has the resources to bring new opportunities for not only auto adjusters, but now for property adjusters. To get started with SCA Claim Services, head on over to adjustertv.com slash SCA. And while you're there, don't forget to download the totally free SCA Claim Services Field Adjuster Gear Guide. Again, that's adjustertv.com slash SCA to download the free gear guide and to apply. So I have this one, <clears throat> and it's actually more than one. This is a kind of a generic one. And it's this is... <laughs> This is one of my favorite things. And, and usually people in the country do this. And it's one of the reasons why I love working in the country, out in the middle love of the like rural America. You're making calls, you're calling your claims, right? And you call this guy, you know, Harold Johnson, you know. You call up, you talk to him, can I speak to Mr. Johnson, please? This is Harold, you know, and you, you start having a little conversation and they wanna, they wanna visit for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. An older guy. And then you get to the point where you set up the appointment, you get the appointment set up and everything. Well, you know how to get out here? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know I've got a GPS. Well, what you do is, and then five minutes of instructions, which include, and you know where uh, uh, the old uh, dairy barn is at, at, by the creamery over there that burned down seven years ago? Well, you, a mile before that, you take a right-hand turn and you get, and you go down there, and I, I've, I've, I've used my odometer, and I discovered it was exactly 1.72 miles, and, and it's, it's like, and it, the truth is, I'm writing those instructions down. Okay, yeah, honey, so old barn, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Because what happens is, is you, post, you put in a rural route address or a town line or a range road or whatever, you know, middle of, I mean, we're talking like out in rural Kansas, rural Nebraska, where the... The, it's a grid of roads and they're a mile apart, right? You put that in the Google Maps and it could, it could have you five miles away from that guy's oh, yeah. house. Nowhere near it. So I'm writing that guy's instructions down. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay, yeah, and listen, if I have any trouble, I'll give you a call. If I got cell service out there, I will absolutely. And chances are, I'm probably still calling that guy. Hey, I, you know, can't find it, right? So that was it, really. It was just yeah. old man directions. Old, old man guy. directions are great. And, and what I've learned is, if they start telling them to you, exactly right, man. Write them down, man. I, I just had one a couple of weeks ago where the guy says, this is, I mean, I looked at his address, and he goes, yeah, I'm three quarters of a mile south of town in a brown house. You'll come across a strip of house, I'll be in the brown house. Okay. I popped it in. I look at the, I look at the coordinates on my, 
on Google Maps, Google Maps is like, they're showing like three miles south of town. Yeah. I'm like, well, Google Maps got that one wrong. So I pull out my iPad. iPad pops at about, I don't know, closer to town, but it's not, if you look at the satellite image, there's no houses there. Right, right, okay? exactly. You look just south of town, it's three quarters of a mile, there's three houses there. I've got built-in nav on my car, you know? Mm -hmm. I popped in, that one's right, Tom Tom's got it right. Other times, Tom Tom's completely wrong. Right, you know, right, right. Got it right that time. That was exactly. It. But uh, he, but you got three quarters of a mile south of town, brown house, guess what? Only brown house. Only brown house. There's six yeah. houses there, it was the only brown one. <laughs> yeah, and listen, that's perfectly valid, perfectly, you know, acceptable, reasonable. You know, what color is your house? What color is your, the car sitting in the driveway? What kind of car do you guys have? Because sometimes the maps, they just don't get it right. Yep. And then you're, you don't want to waste time driving around, even if you waste an extra 10 minutes trying to find that person's house. You know, oh, well, you know, you just go down there to the stop and go, and you take a right there, and then you go north about, uh, you know, four tenths of a mile. Yeah. So on so, and so on. I had this one, just another old farm boy story, running around up in Iowa this year during the duration. Mm -hmm. And great guy, just super, just, I will tell you this, my time in Iowa this year, I will go back and work at Iowa any time. Oh, absolutely. The best people I've ever worked with, all these farmers. I was out there mainly doing, you know, farm equipment, and semi trucks out there. And, and this old guy, you know, I get to his house and man, his, his grain silos are gone. His barn is gone. Yeah. This tractor, it's it's a it's a tractor from a tractor trailer. You know, yeah. It was a Peterbilt. It's just where the barn collapsed on it. It's just the cab's gone. It's you know, it's just crushed in. You know, and and you're looking at this, and you look at this guy's property, but yet his hundred and twelve year old house is standing there unscathed. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. But everything else on the property is just like gone. Not its first derecho. You know, all the all the you know hay is I mean not hay. All the corn fields around him are laid over on their side. Barns are gone. Everything's gone. House is still standing. Yeah. He's got an old tractor out on the side with a generator that's running. He's got the tractor jacked up. It's running, and the axle has a has a. A belt tied onto a generator, yeah, just like in Predator. Turning, remember? Yeah, and this is what it's like, and it's and it's powering his house, man. That's that's what he's doing. Well, we get out there, and so I'm looking at everything, and I'm just like, this was one of the worst houses I had seen. You know, um, properties I'd gone to, I'd seen some pretty bad ones. This one was probably the worst, where everything was just gone. So we looked at that one. He goes, "Well, I had three other trucks, and they're not here. There's this other one six miles down the road. You got time?" I'm like, oh, "It's like my time is your time." So we go down to this other property that he owns. So all this land's been in his family for yeah. ever. And so goes, we go to this other house. You know, same thing, man. Barn's gone, grain silo's gone. Freaking hundred and twenty year old house still standing, looks unscathed. You know, tractor's not that bad. It's still serviceable, drivable, everything else. We finished that and went, and then he goes, yeah, we got one more place to go. And so we go to the last one. All the windows are busted out of it. I mean, it's, I mean, this thing was like, he goes, yeah, this is the one I was driving. And when it came through and I looked up and it, things got dark and, and next thing I know, the windows are blowing out of it, and I'm scrambling trying to get out the passenger side. Then I realize it's probably not a good idea. I better just get in the floorboard. Then the rear window blows out of it. Good grief. So he's inside of this this tractor, and debris flying inside. And, you know, he even had a little you know, remnants of a of an injury to his head. And uh, and I'm like, wow, man, that's incredible. You know, and and uh, he's telling me the story and. And uh, I was like, man, it, and this guy's just, just like, eh, you know, yeah. just telling the story like no big deal. I'm sort of going, man, that's got to be scary. Well, he noticed whenever I came off the side of his truck that I was limping a little bit, and he goes, "What happened to you?" And I said, "Well, you know, over a year ago, I came off a roof and I still had problems with my knee from time to time." He goes, "What happened?" So I tell him the story about me coming off the roof. I said, but that, I said, but you know what, man? I said, that ain't anything near with hearing about you making it through 150 mile an hour winds inside the tractor with 
debris blowing around right. and everything else. He goes, you know what? You know the greatest thing about the story you told and the story I told? We're both standing here talking about it. Right. You know, it's just yeah, yeah. that simple, man. He says, hey. You lived. The story Carry of what on. happened ain't a big deal. Yeah. It's yeah. how it ended that we're both standing here talking exactly about it. Exactly right. You know, that's, that was, uh, man, if you did, you know, you just get around country people, you know, just, just, oh, just yeah. farmers, you know, people like that. Man, and there's a difference between farmers and ranchers, I'll tell you right now. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh, that, that sounds like that's fighting a, words. We don't no, want to start to... No, it's, it's, it's totally different. Ranchers tend to be a little bit more saltier, I guess you say, <laughs> whereas farmers tend to be a little bit... They're both humble. Yeah. Farmers seem to just have a little bit more humility than ranchers do sometimes. All right. Well, we'll see what happens but, uh, in the comments. Anyway, <laughs> it's just my experience. <laughs> I mean, a Texas rancher and an Iowa farmer, come on, man. There's uh, going to be, be a big there's difference. Gonna a, there's going to be a big difference. Be a little difference there. But anyway, just super. I mean, just to this day, I just always remember. Anytime something happens, I go, you know, the greatest part of that, about that story is I'm standing here telling it. Here we are. Here we are. So, all right, sir. All right. You yeah. ready for bad dad joke bingo lottery roulette? Death, dad joke. Lottery. Death will. <laughs> dad joke. Go fish. Did I get two in there? Uh, perhaps you did. Or is it just two pieces of paper stuck together? Just two pieces of paper stuck together. All right. I'm ready. I hope I'm ready. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Did you hear about the wooden shoe in the toilet? No, I did not hear about the wooden shoe in the toilet. It was clogged. No, no. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode of Adjuster TV Radio, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Find more episodes at adjustertv.com slash podcast. This is Adjuster TV.